Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to model steel bridge structures in STAD Pro Connect Edition. This course is specifically designed for the students that are competing in the ASCE, AISC Student Steel Bridge Competition. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on assigning properties and orientation to the members in our model. We will now turn our attention back to our sample model that we created in the previous video. We are now going to move on to the next phase in our workflow, which is to assign properties to the structural members. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my workflow page control area and select the properties tab. When the Properties tab is selected, you're going to notice that the Properties Whole Structure dialog is now going to appear in the data area. Now we have two different ways that we can assign properties to our Structural Steel members. We can assign standard AISC sections using the Sections database that was installed with STAD Pro, or we can create custom sections. Now your particular steel bridge model may have a variety of these different types of sections, so we'll get practice in assigning both types. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to access the AISC section database and assign some standard sizes to the model. To do that, I'm going to go to my Properties dialog and click on the Section Database icon. This is going to bring up the section database that's installed with STAD Pro. We have section databases for steel sections for both the U.S. and several international standards. We also include section databases for cold form steel, timber, and aluminum. For our training today, we're going to be using the American Sections Database. And you can see each of the sections within this database are kind of organized by type. We're going to start by selecting an angle. Now the nomenclature used in STAD Pro might be slightly different than the nomenclature used in the standard AISC sections manual. For angles, basically the first two numbers represent the first leg length of the members, so 2.0 would be 2.0 inches, uh, and the second two, two numbers represent the second two legs, and then the last number represents the thickness of the section. We're going to go ahead and select an L2020 section. Now this angle section represents an L2 by 2 by 2 sixteenths, or basically 1 eighth. We're going to select the section and then click Add. And what's going to happen is it's going to appear over here in the Properties window. And while you're in the section database, you're going to want to select any sections you think you're going to use. Now, we can always come back to this window at a later time if we want to select something else. So at this point, we're going to select our next section property. and We're going to select an HSS rectangular section. We're going to select an HSST. We're going to go down and select a 2 by 2 by 1 eighth. Now you're going to notice that when I select this section, the material checkbox is already active and it's already automatically set to steel. So this is going to, when I assign this property to the members, it's automatically going to assign the steel section properties to it as well. We'll go ahead and click the Add button and then we'll click Close. Again, you can return to that location at any point if you need to add some additional sections here just by clicking on the Sections Database I button. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to add a custom section to the properties window. Now if I take a look at my status bar at the bottom of the screen first though, I'm going to notice that my input units are set to kips for force and feet for length. Now it might be convenient if you have more, um, if you have smaller sections to maybe enter them in terms of inches instead of feet. So I'm going to change my input units before I get to that point. To do that, I'm going to come up to my ribbon, select the Geometry tab, and then click on the Input Units icon. Here, instead of feet, I can just switch to inches, and then click Apply, and then you can see that the status bar has been updated. Now, if I go to define a new section, I can enter in terms of inches instead of feet, which might be more convenient. 
To define a custom section, we're going to go back to our properties dialog, and this time we're going to click on the define button. Once we click on that button, we're going to see that the properties dialog is going to appear, and we have a couple of different types of shapes that we can assign. I'm going to start with a circle section, so basically I'm going to enter a steel rod, and I'm going to enter a thickness 0.25. Now for here, you're going to want to make sure that you specify the steel property because it may come up as concrete first, which is a common use of this particular feature, the button for the custom sections. So I'm going to enter that as steel. I'm going to click the add button and then I'm going to click close. So we've done our first step for assigning properties to our structural model. Now we need to take it a step further and assign these to the particular sections in the model. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the section that I want to assign. I'm going to start with my angle section first. Then what I want to do is I want to select all of the sections in my model that this is going to be applicable to. You're going to do this with your beams cursor, which if I take a look at my cursor right now, I can see it's already selected. And I'm going to select those particular members in the view window. Now we have a bunch of different ways that you can select it and you may find that some of the selection tools that are available in the select tab in the ribbon might be helpful or you might find it helpful to change maybe an or the orientation of your model which is what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the view tab in the ribbon and what I'd like to do is view an elevation because I want to assign this to basically my top cord and my bottom cord. So I'm going to view in elevation instead. I'm going to go with a front view from positive Z. So you can see here. And this will make it very easy for me if I draw a fence around the top cord. I'm going to hold down my control key and draw a fence around the bottom cord. Then if I return back to my isometric view, I can see very quickly how I was able to select all of those sections. I'm going to finish this up by selecting an assignment method. So I'm going to say assign to selected beams. It's going to assign this section because that's one that's highlighted. And then I'm going to click assign and then we'll click yes and you can see that that section has been assigned now. Let's go ahead and repeat that process so I, I start by highlighting the section I want to assign and then I'm going to select my members. Again I may decide that I want to change the orientation. I'm going to draw a fence. Basically everything above those lattice trusses is going to be selected and I can go ahead and say assign to selected members. Let's return back to our isometric view so we can see everything that's been assigned so far. Now what I'm going to do for my last section type, my circular section, I'm going to start by highlighting this custom section first and then I'm going to select the members I want to assign it to. Now for this particular model, I basically want to assign it to everything that doesn't currently have a section assignment assigned to it. And we do have a tool for that. So if I go to the select tab in my ribbon toolbar, I can see I have several different selection tools and I do have a tool for by missing property. This will select any section that doesn't have its property already assigned to it. So I can go ahead and say by missing property and I'll just say missing property. It's going to select everything that hasn't been assigned a section yet. I'm going to finish this off by saying assign to selected beams and then I'll click yes. Now, there's two good uses for that type of command. First of all, it'll help you quickly grab everything that wasn't assigned a section, so you can assign a section to it. But another use for that might be to interrogate your model once you're ready to perform an analysis. In STAT Pro, every single member must be assigned a material property and a section property for an analysis to be conducted. Um, otherwise, without that information, the program won't be able to calculate your stiffness matrix, and it also won't be able to calculate the self-weight of the structure. So it's going to need that information before an analysis is performed. The missing property command might be a good way to find out if there's any sections in your property that any sections in your model that don't currently have a section assigned, as that will cause an error in your analysis. Now that we've already assigned our sections, we can actually take a look at a 3D rendering of the model. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my entire model, which I can just simply do by drawing a fence around the entire thing. If I want to see a rendering of the structure, I can go up to my ribbon toolbar, 
click on the View tab, and I can find my 3D rendering icon. This will give me a better idea about how the current sections are laid out. and It'll give me a good information about if I need to modify anything. What I'm going to take a look at for my particular models, I'm going to take a look at the orientation of these angle members that are the tops and bottom cords of my lattice trusses. I would probably prefer that one of my uh, legs of my angle was uh, horizontal in plan. And you can see right now it's kind of uh, skewed. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use beta angles in STAD Pro, and that's going to allow us to assign a different orientation to any member in the model that you wish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unselect everything, and I'm going to go to this Beta Angle tab right within this Properties dialog. And from here I can create any type of orientation for any member I want. I'm going to click on the Create Beta Angle, and I can enter it in terms of degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a beta angle of 45 degrees, and then I'm going to click OK. So here I've created my beta angle so far. Now just like with properties, I need to take this a second step to then assign it to my sections in the model. Now I'm going to assign this beta angle to all the members in my top chord. So that would be all of these members, for example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my selection tab in my ribbon toolbar, and I'm going to take a look at some of the different options I have for selecting members. So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the, my geometry tab, and I can select members using this parallel option. I'm going to say it's going to be parallel to the XZ plane, which is going to be the horizontal plane, and it's going to allow me to enter a range. Now I happen to know the level of this top chord, so I'm going to enter a minimum that's below the level of the top chord and a maximum that's above. So I'm going to go from 9 inches to 12 inches, and we'll click OK. So you can see there's an, many more ways that you can use to select the members to make it a little easier on yourself. Once I do this, I'm going to go ahead and say Assign to Selected Beams, and we'll click the Assign button. I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process for the bottom chord now. So I'm going to go ahead and say Create Beta Angle. This time I'm going to enter a beta angle of 135 degrees. And I'm going to select the bottom chord members. So I'm going to go parallel to the XZ plane. And I'm going to enter the minimum and maximum at zero. I'm going to make sure that the beta angle 135 is selected. I'm going to say assign to selected beams. And I'm going to click on the assign button. Now if I were to take a look at a 3D rendering of the model, I can see that the orientation of my members has now changed. You're going to want to model your members that closely represents your actual physical structure that you're going to build. I'm going to finish this off by clicking the Assign button, and then I'll confirm that with Yes. Now you should be very careful and review all of the specifications that are available through this area to see which is appropriate for your model as you're going to want to simulate your structure in STAD Pro. This video is part of the Modeling Steel Bridge Structures video series. A link to the series playlist is available here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.